Good morning. Good morning. I'm Jen. And this story starts with these two. My kids. We were hiking through the open woods, and my daughter noticed that somebody had thrown a plastic cup of cat litter into a creek. And she looked at me and she said, Daddy, that doesn't go there. She was four. And I know this sounds like a cliche, but for me, that was the eye-opening moment. It reminded me of when I was a kid. I used to go to summer camp. And on the morning of visiting day, right before they let our anxious parents come barreling through the gates, our camp director would say, quick, everybody, go pick up five pieces of litter. <laughs> so now you had a couple hundred kids who were each picking up five pieces, and within a few minutes, we had a much cleaner camp. And I thought, why can't we apply that model to the entire planet? And that was the inspiration for starting Literati. The future, or excuse me, the vision, is to create a future that's litter-free. Let me show you how it started. I was walking, and I picked up a cigarette butt and I took a picture of it with Instagram. There was no rhyme or reason, there was no big idea, I just did. And then I added this hashtag and I threw out the cigarette butt. That's the cigarette. And then I picked up another one, and another one. And I noticed two things happening to me personally. The first was litter suddenly became approachable. It went from being this blight on the ground that I either A, didn't notice, or B, wanted nothing to do with, to, oh, there's a cool photo out. The second thing was that at the end of a couple days, I looked at my phone, I had 30 or 40 pictures, and I had thrown out or recycled every single piece I photographed. And I realized I was effectively keeping a record of the impact I was having on the planet. No clue what I could do with that information, I just thought it was cool. So I started telling people what I was doing, and they started doing the same thing. And one day this photo showed up. And I looked at my wife and I said, we made it to China! <laughs> and she said, take it easy, my brother's backpacking through China, and he's the one that took the photograph. <laughs> But this photo was a seminal moment because it made me realize that there's something much more impactful than pretty pictures than solid data. So when we started this with a simple hashtag on Instagram, we were able to start collecting who, what, where, and when. We were really able to start understanding the types of litter that were on the ground. So the next thing I did was put together a map and started plotting the points where people in the literati community were starting to find and pick up litter. I'll stop here at Lake Merritt. I noticed that 90% of what had been picked up was concentrating in the north. I had no idea why. Maybe that's because there's a lot of foot traffic in that area, or the wind blows in that direction. But I did know that suddenly we have some information, some data that we've never had before. Could we just open a dialogue with the city of Oakland and say, why don't we put more trash cans and recycling bins in places that we're finding more litter? Going one level deeper into the map, each one of those pins represents one piece of litter picked up by someone in the litter on the community. My kids go to school in the bullseye. And I showed this to their teacher, and this woman looked at me and she said, that is awful. And I said, it's even worse than you think, because this just represents what a few of us have picked up over the last couple of weeks. The reality is that there are tens of thousands of pieces of litter all around us. We just don't see them anymore. We've become desensitized. But when I showed this to her, I could see a light bulb in her go off, which was, now I can see the problem. It makes it a bit more tangible, and that can lead to much more tangible solutions. Fast forward a few weeks, the community starts growing and tagging the brands they're picking up. Another light bulb moment for me, which was, what if we could open up a conversation with, let's say, Starbucks? And say, listen, Starbucks, we're not suggesting you're directly responsible for littering the planet, but clearly, your cups mm -hmm. and your napkins and products are finding their way to the ground. There's got to be a better way. Here's what this community has accomplished so far. I started with one cigarette butt. This morning, from 6 a.m. till about five minutes ago, we picked up 600 pieces. Those numbers are actually quite small. But to start, we've been very lucky. And we've had our stories shared pretty far and wide, which has helped this thing grow. I don't want to get there. I know that's a, a movie, but here's the reality. The Citaron River in West Java. Something right outside our back door called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch and all these dying albatross chicks that are being fed plastic that's washing into the middle of the ocean because of what we're putting on the ground. And when you see pictures like these, this problem feels insurmountable. The only way I know how to tackle a problem like that is one piece at a time. Because that much I can do, and so can you, and so can you. And individually, you can make a difference, but together, we create an impact. I'm going to give you a very brief overview of the different types of groups we've started working with, the environmental groups. Not only because it makes sense, right, there's an alignment of interest, but they're very interested in the data. Whether that's data that's being used to shape public policy or data to better inform storm, um, storm runoff situations. Brands have started reaching out. Whole Foods ran a campaign on Earth Day three years in a row. Bring in one photograph, you got a free baked good. 
<clears throat> they were excited because they knew anybody who brought in one literati photo was going to shop. Cities. I'll be brief on this one. The city of San Francisco conducted a litter study a couple of years ago. They wanted to understand what percentage of cigarette, what percentage of litter was cigarette related. They wanted that because they wanted to create a tax. But they used pencils and clipboards to collect the data. Not effective. Then they got sued by Philip Morris. Because Philip Morris said, your data methodology has no integrity. We started working with the city. We did a 32 site analysis, picked up 5,000 pieces, gave them the data that they wanted, and that informed an entire tax that is in place today. A massive revenue stream for the city. But we can take that further. Imagine every city in the world having a unique litter footprint. Not just for cigarettes, but for everything that's on the ground. I learned two things during that process. One, Instagram's not the right tool. And two, if you think about it, we could replicate that over and over and over, and suddenly our solutions are based on data rather than the status quo, which is, it's Friday, and that's the day we sweep the streets. Now that we've built this iOS app and a whole backend infrastructure, we're able to create things like municipal litter profiles. And the last group, and probably the group I'm most excited by, is all the work that we're doing with schools. This thing started because of my kids, and if we're really going to create transformative, long-term change, who better to start with than our kids? Here's one school, fourth and fifth graders in Modesto, California, use Literati to pick up 1,247 pieces of litter on their campus. But more importantly, the data showed them that the most common form of litter on the campus were the plastic straw wrappers from their own cafeteria. <laughs> so these fourth and fifth graders went to their principal and said, why are we still buying individually wrapped straws? And they stopped. That's using the technology to gain some data that leads to an insight that drives an action that creates a long-term change. And what's nice is that when you have all these people and all these schools and all these brands and all these cities and all these environmental organizations all working towards the same common goal, that map that I showed you earlier, today it looks like that. That's the literary story. Thank you. Awesome.